You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Next up, we have Steve Rizzo. Steve, how's it going? Welcome to The Startup. Hey, thanks for having me. How are you? Good, good. Oh, he's got a little East Coast in him. <laughs> I can hear that yeah, accent. You got, yeah, you got a problem with that. <laughs> <use only. laughs> Steve, welcome to The Startup. Go ahead and introduce yourself and your brand. Well, uh, I am uh, I, 25 years as a stand-up comedian. Um, at the pinnacle of my career, I left stand-up to become a motivational speaker, and I've been doing that since, and it's the best move I ever made. I love that. So Elevation Fitness, tell is that the brand or is it Steve that's just, that That's just the gym I work out in. I just threw something on, and they said, well, might as well put this on. So Okay, well, you, shout out to Elevation. You're giving them some love. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so great. You, it sounds like you have the, the, the ingredients to a long life. You got comedy and you got motivation and fitness. I mean, those are the two things we know that you need to have a sense of humor. Why don't you share with us your path in getting into the motivational uh, speaking? Sure. What? Yeah, well, that, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're looking at someone who was uh, voted least likely to succeed in his senior class in high school. Uh, <laughs> when I was 14 years old, I was told by a guidance counselor in front of my mom and dad that I just didn't have what it takes to go to college. And um, it was uh, that type of negative labeling that molded the direction for a good part of my life. Uh, When I got into the adult world after high school, um, my philosophy was don't try and you can't fail, you know. So but uh, six years after high school, uh, thank God, because of a brother of mine who was 100 percent disabled from the Vietnam War, he turned his life around and he went to college and he told me that I was going to go. And I said, no, I'm not. And he said, yes, you are. And I did. Uh, although it wasn't easy, I graduated with high honors. I went back to the same school that I graduated from and I taught English and I was a counselor for kids with behavioral problems, proving what? once and for all that guidance counselors are not fortune tellers. Okay. So, wow. So, but, but it, you know, it just, it just kept snowballing. You know, I, Every step I took just gave me a little bit more confidence. And as I was teaching and doing the counseling at night, I was doing stand up at the clubs in New York City and and, and Long Island, which is where I live. And I started getting really, really good. And clubs started hiring me to headline, but I couldn't because I was teaching. So I left the school system and uh, I decided to go into the world of stand up comedy. Uh, My opening acts back in the day were Chris Rock, Sam Kennison. Rosie O'Donnell, Drew Carey. I shared the marquee with Eddie Murphy, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, Ellen DeGeneres, Kevin James. And uh, I'm not saying this to impress you. Well, yes, I am just a little bit. <laughs> hey, it's an accomplishment to get yeah. your name on the marquees with. Yeah, club. but it, it, oh, yeah. And it was, it, Come on, you got to brag about that. <laughs> yeah, but actually, at the pinnacle of my stand up career, though, I had this calling to do something else. Hmm. And uh, I decided to go and uh, I knew I had a calling because that teacher was still in me, you know, yeah. and I had this calling to do something in a more profound way. And um, I just delved into being a motivational speaker. And that's that's what I do. So I love this. but there's a I lot of humor this. involved in my presentation, though, you know. Yeah. And, and I, Monique, I think that, excuse me. How could there not be? Right. Well, yeah. And, and you know, the it, it fits perfectly because, and I think you'll agree, the attention span of the average audience today is very, very minimal. <laughs> and, and, you know, because you could be up there and, and unless you have some kind of entertaining value, you run the risk of losing the audience because they start pulling up their phones and they're texting. Oh my gosh. And, so my first 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, I go, I do nothing but make them laugh. Wow. I can see them relax. And sometimes I speak to 10,000 people. And I could see them relaxing. They trust me. It's and I give them the message, and it's like laughter, message, laughter, message, and it's like a laugh and learn situation. So, I really like that you're adding that teaspoon of sugar helps the medicine go down kind of approach. And where are you seeing your um, your teaching going for the next year, for the first quarter, Q1 of 2024? Who's your dream client? Who haven't you mentored yet that you're looking to identify? Well, most of my clients are four to 100, 500 companies. Wow. And uh, what, what I'm doing now, uh, which is, it's a, good, it's a great question. Um, 
what I'm doing now is uh, uh, my 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 book recently came out, uh, Conversations with Bob, nice. and uh, uh, Bob is God. Okay. okay. No, hey, so, God. Hey, uh, Bob. <laughs> in case you what your viewers are, are wondering, how does he get the name Bob? You have to read the book to find out. It's all dialogue. It's between two characters, Bob and Bernie. Bernie resides in the negative zone where challenges get blown out of proportion and problems turn into emotional havoc. And he blames God for his life not working. Mm. It just so happens something happens to Bernie. He has a heart attack. He winds up in this place where he thinks is heaven and he meets this person by the name of Bob. And then when he finds out it's God, he tells Bob, you never answered my prayers. You know how, how hard I tried. I, I pleaded with you. I begged you. Do you know how hard it is to look at your friends and they have everything you want? And no matter how hard I tried, nothing worked. You never answered my prayers. Mm -hmm. And Bob listens and says, I did answer. But you pray with the same negative attitude that you have about your life. And yet you expect a miracle. Ah. So, Ber so Bernie says, well, isn't that what you do? Isn't that your job to create miracles? So Bob says, have you ever heard the saying, God helps those who help themselves? And he said, yes, I heard it my whole life. He goes, apparently wow. you don't know what it means. You have to meet me halfway, Bernie, and you never did. You pray for success, but when it's not coming your way within a week or two, you run around in your negative rampage again saying the figures, my prayers aren't answered again, and yet you expect me to help you. So the whole book, Bob gives Bernie what he calls common sense success strategies mm -hmm. and shifting habits to turn his life around. So I created this program from the book called The Bob Factor. Oh, and and uh, it's the the subtitle is transforming your life from failure to success, from unhappiness to fulfillment, and from lack to abundance. And all of the strategies are the same strategies that are within the book. It's entertaining, and um, it's the reason why I was put on this planet. It took me whole, my whole life to figure that out. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful gift though that you're giving to yourself and others that you did discover it? And why don't you hold the book up one more time, Steve? You guys, this is a great time for Christmas, for Hanukkah, for Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating. Conversations with Bob. It'll fit in the stocking. You just roll it up, put a little ribbon on it, package it up. You're, you're selling it on Kindle and Prime, right? Where are you selling it? You could, I could send you, well, you can go to Amazon. That's the best play. Go to yourinnerbob.com. As a matter of I fact, see. if you go to that website, you could see sample chapters and there's videos explaining what the book is about. And for anyone who feels, and that's almost everyone, I will say everyone on this planet who feels that your life isn't working on any level or all levels, this book, it's very simplistic. It gives you these strategies and we're born with these strategies, Monique. They're innate. Yeah. They're a part of who we are. It's just that yeah. we get so caught up in the crap of life that we're not we aware that we can tap into these basic common sense things that can help us to turn our lives around. I love what you're doing, Steve. Keep your valve open, everybody. Abraham Hicks always says you got to open your valve. You've got to let it in. It's yes. just the disallowing of the stream. The stream is flowing. You just have to let it in. And we are built up from all these things that we were told subconsciously and how we were raised. Yep. But Steve, come, you got to come out for Emmys week. I'm sure that there's some celebrities that could really benefit from you. We'll have to invite you through Jessica. And uh Happy holidays. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on your book. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. And please, you're welcome. And tell Ron Konkama and uh, Long Island and Islip, I say hello. I've been lost there once. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not too far from Islip. I, I live in Babylon. So that's, All that's right, you guys. Well, we start up today. This is Steve Rizzo. I'm Monique LeRae. We'll see you next week. Be well. Be well. Bye. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.